Welcome to this, middle, <laughs> this meeting of Middlesbrough Council. Uh, we have quite a full agenda tonight, so we, we need to get started and get on with it. And it is rather warm in here, so we need to sort things out. Right, agenda item number one, apologies for absence. Chair, we have apologies from councillors Lewis, Marston, McCabe, Rooney, Smith and Story. P. Story. Anybody else? No, okay. Declarations of interest. Do we have any declarations of interest at all? No? No. Right, the minutes. Can we agree that the minutes are a, a, a true record? The minutes from the ordinary and the extraordinary council meeting that was held on the 26th of June? Can we have a seconder for them? Right. Item agenda, item agenda number four, announcements and communications. Haven't got any. Item number five, this is a question from uh, Mr. K to, I believe, Councillor John Rathmill. Is Mr. K with us tonight? Is he here? Mr. K, do you want me to read it out or do you want to do it yourself? You'll read it out. Okay. Councillor Rathmill? Councillor Rathmill? Oh, I can't see him, where is he? Oh, there you are. This is for you. <laughs> <laughs> right, go ahead, Mr. K. In respect to the uh, asset sales, at least Councillor Rathmill advised what the estimated costs of the investigation are and the cost of any subsequent legal challenge should one follow. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Councillor? Yes, thank you, Chair. I suppose the first response to that question is what's the cost to the public purse? Should an investigation not go ahead, um, given the questions that have been raised previously? In respect of this, the cost of the public purse, it's all in line with the current audit spend, in so much as it's all been fit in with the audit work and there's no additional work being carried out. Obviously, that may change, depending on what auditors feed back in. Um, so again, there's no additional cost to the public purse. We're not on a spending mission here, but what we are doing is looking at making sure we're achieving value for money and that previous questionable practices have now stopped. And as for a legal challenge, uh, if it's a civil legal challenge, it would be wrong for me to estimate guess if it was criminal obviously that would be dealt with by the cps as for council officers time there is no council officers time involved because it's all been delegated um, through myself with the internal auditors so that's quite sufficient um, but as for the uh, legal challenge i mean one thing i would say the wording of the question would suggest that uh, the person who wrote the question is expecting to find more than I am. Um, but, I mean, re regardless, a lot of the question itself is just mere conjecture, and it would be wrong to guess and estimate. <coughs> but one thing is clear. It was a pledge of the many of the independents here, um, and it was also something that the mayor responded to at numerous hustings events that an investigation of some kind would be carried out. Um, uh, it's unfortunate that I found myself in the position to be driving it, but seven weeks after an election, no movement had been made. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. All right. Item agenda six, Mayor's statement and report. Thank you, Chair. That's great. Um, hello. Welcome, everyone. This is our... Uh, uh, second, I think, proper formal uh, council meeting, so it might be a bit smoother. Uh, us newbies might be a bit more, a bit more relaxed. 
bit more uh, efficient. Let's see. Um, there are se- I'm going to be dead brief. I'm going to try to be dead brief. Uh, and there are seven things that I want to, uh, to bring up tonight. The first one is actually about this incredible thing we've had going on. It's called the Town Wide Cleanup. And it's happened all over town so far. It's a month-long feast of activities. We've had about seven or eight days over in the Thormsby. We had volunteers. We had locals. We had an international reggae star who went out and picked litter and did great stuff. We've had fantastic things in Linthorpe. In the town centre, we've had uh, council staff, and I think they're even more encouraged to go out this, this Friday, pick litter in Centre Square and beyond. Uh, and I don't think this is really the place, place to give adverts or plugs to businesses, but do you know what? If, uh, if a business does great work, I'm going to give them a plug. So the team from Max Solicitors uh, went out and did a great job cleaning the street around their offices the other day, which is fantastic to see. So the town-wide cleanup, if anybody's watching, if any councillors... Uh, want to get even more involved, I know some already are, please get in touch. Uh, if anybody uh, in the public wants to get in touch, do it via Facebook or email or the council's website. We'd love to help you do even more. We want to make the town look as fantastic as it possibly can. Uh, number two is about social housing. Now, there was a, 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 a silly comment put on social media uh, by some nameless councillors uh, that, that they were disappointed that I had ditched a plan to build social housing. And it's the most preposterous nonsense I've ever heard. In fact, in fact, what I can assure you right now is I'm working super hard and we're like that far away from being able to announce 150 to 200 examples of social housing, homes that are social housing in central Middlesbrough. Now that's, this has not happened for decades. And it gives me great pleasure, like genuinely, personally, great pleasure to be doing something that could be described as socialist in the centre of Middlesbrough, when it hasn't been done before. The third thing, I want to champion our brilliant sports stars. There are two fantastic, very recent examples. We had Liam Plunkett, the cricketer who helped to win, helped England win the World Cup. So well done, Liam, and just, uh, he, and he's a lad from Martin or, or, or Nunthorpe, or maybe both. We, we did ask permission, or we asked help from the, uh, uh, from the post office to de- that they would decorate one of the post boxes. They're doing a number up and down the country to celebrate the fantastic World Cup win. And they said no. So, so we thought, right, we'll, we'll do something ourselves. So there's, there's a brilliant group called the Nunthorpe and Martin Knitters. who do great stuff, great themes, great fun, get the community engaged. And they've decorated a post box up in Martin. I've seen the initial pictures, all championing Liam Plunkett and Middlesbrough, and it's fantastic. Uh, and we need more of that. But the other great sports star, of course, is Glenn Durant, who's definitely from the town of Middlesbrough. He didn't grow up inside the, the, the council boundaries, but he's very, very proud to be associated with Middlesbrough. And uh, Glenn has reached the quarterfinals of the world match play. He, he's, he's now in with a real shot of being officially the best darts player in the world. We need to champion that. So should Glenn be crowned world champion match play on Sunday night, we need to come up with a fantastic way of celebrating that. So I'm inviting the public uh, and members to come forward with ideas. And number four, I want to chat briefly about members' allowances. I had planned to make an announcement tonight, but that was kind of scuppered due to a a technicality. But I want to give you the gist of what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to cut the cost I'm trying to save the public money. I'm trying to give the council more money so we can actually protect the jobs of the great people who work here. And I'm also trying to make the system fairer. So, uh, I I plan to save 50 odd thousand pounds and I hope to be able to announce details of that very soon. But what I also want to do is, is look very closely and make the public fully aware of a really big cost, which is political assistance. And uh, certainly in the last regime, political assistance cost this council, i.e. the taxpayer, a lot of money. Their existence may well have cost a couple, two or three jobs of council staff. Uh, And I'm not sure it's actually a really clever or fair way to do this. Or if we are going to have political assistance for political parties and groups, we need to make sure that the public is 100% on board with that and understands what they're paying for. The fifth thing is the Martin Crawl. Uh, I get so many letters, 
emails and comments about the Martin Crawl, how it blights lives, reduces productivity, and ultimately costs jobs and money. Fixing isn't easy. The first thing we're trying to do is, is rebalance the town's economy into the center of town. More jobs, more houses, more people in the center of town. But I'm also working with uh, a local MP, Simon Clark, on a, on a more significant and longer term, more robust solution to the Martin Crawl. And I hope to be able to announce that very soon. Number six on the list is Tollsby Shops. Anybody who lives anywhere near these shops is fully aware that the situation is an absolute disgrace. Uh, I, I grew up near there. I used to nick out of school and go and buy a Mars bar and a pasty, and there were bustling shops uh, full of older people, younger people, and the community really used them. They've been closed for something like 12 years now, and seemingly, seemingly, the property owner doesn't care that the community suffers. I'm working very hard with the chief exec and with some other people and the property owner to find a solution that works for everyone. So I hope to be able to announce something soon about Tollsby Shops. And number seven, the last one I'm going to mention tonight is on holiday hunger. We're in holiday season. Uh, some might even notice I've got a bit of a light tan myself. I've been away and really enjoyed it. Uh, not everyone gets away. And what's even worse is that sometimes some kids not only do they not get away, they also go hungry. And we need to stop that. It's completely intolerable. So what we've done is we've allocated about £25,000 this summer to run some pilot studies, uh, to fund some projects, to see what works, maybe learn what doesn't work. And what we want to do in the autumn at half term, in the Christmas holidays, Easter and next summer, is plough a lot more money into that work with businesses to raise funds, but we want to make sure that almost no kids ever go hungry in Middlesbrough. My goal is to make Middlesbrough a hunger-free town. Thank you. Right, the mayor, mayor doesn't wish to take any questions, so we'll go on to agenda item number seven. Do we have any questions for the mayor? <laughs> I've not said anything yet. I'm already getting laughs. It's good. It's good. Um, nice to see. I wanted to um, uh, thank the mayor for his statement. Um, I think a lot of it was really good. Um, I was really pleased about the clean-up point. I think that's really important. Um, myself and... Colleagues were out in Centre Square last week um, doing some uh, clean-ups and we're going to be putting a programme of our own um, in our own ward together for where we'd like to see clean-ups done. Um, I think it's really important and as we've seen through the budget process, one of the things the council's looking to do to try and reduce costs and find the right savings that we need is to make sure that people in the town take responsibility for cleaning up their own areas and that we talk to businesses and make sure that everyone works together to tidy the town, that we don't just rely on the council services to do that. And I think the clean-up is a very important part of that and that's something the Labour group are very supportive of, so that's really good. Um, the social housing point, again, um, it, it doesn't exactly chime with perhaps what you've said in the past, but I, I'm, I'm very pleased to hear it. I personally hope that M Homes will be used to develop that site. I'm not sure who will be, but I would rather see M Homes do that because that is the vehicle that the previous Labour administration created to build social housing and build affordable housing. And what it does is it brings revenue into the town hall as well. It brings revenue into Middlesbrough that we wouldn't have got previously from that. So it's a, it's a revenue generator and it also fills a gap in the housing market. So I think I'd really like to see... Can, councillor, can I just interrupt you? Can, can you ask the question? Please. I'm, I'm just picking up on some of the things the mayor said and then he can respond to what I've said. No, no just ask the question. Okay, could, could the mayor respond to that then? Um, could he also respond to the point about political assistance? I've got, I do have a real concern about the mayor using this particular arena to talk about individual staff members' jobs. I'm not sure this is the appropriate moment to talk about people's livelihoods in that way. And we have a political assistant and I know other political groups have political assistants. And I think it needs to be placed on record the important work that they do because the political assistant that we have and that the other groups have, I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure the political chairman, what chairman, the political chairman, assistants chairman, do, what the political assistants do is make sure 
They make sure that we do our jobs as well as we can and we provide the best service to the people of Middlesbrough. I don't believe I have to ask a question, Chair. I think, it, I think I'm allowed to make a statement and, and then the Mayor can respond. Will, um, will, will, will the people in, people in the public gallery be quiet, please? Will you, will you and the fa the final refrain thing, from shouting out while the so council is on his feet? All I'm, asking for the, all I'm asking the mayor to do is to be cautious about how he talks about individuals' livelihoods because this is their financial futures. And I know some of them in the room tonight. I think it's very, it's very difficult for them hearing that tonight here when it perhaps is not the appropriate place to do that. And the final thing is Tolsby Shops. I'm very pleased to hear you re-announce what the Labour administration announced previously as well. We announced that this was going to be something that will be taken forward. The Member of Parliament, Andy MacDonald, and myself through his office as well, and local people in that ward have been working very hard. It is a blight. It is something that's awful. And what I'm, what I'm pleased to hear from the Mayor is that he's supportive of taking this forward because it is very important that we get that site developed. And again, M Homes is something that could be used to develop that too. And I, I hope that that'll be part of the discussions too, to Councilor see if M Homes Story, can do once that. again, I ask you, please, let's is, have the question. <laughs> You're going round and round and round. You're allowed three minutes. I will, I will go, finish please. talking, but it is very difficult for me to no, make my not. comments no, if people not. are talking over me all the time and listen, you're not listen, sharing it, so I have to, to, I have to keep talking to louder. Listen to me. I will not tell you again. I am the chairman, and I am telling you, let's have the question. I've made my statements. If the mayor wants to re respond to them, he can. Yeah, I'll just say a couple of things. Is this microphone on? Hi. Right, uh, two or three points. First of all, uh, I absolutely categorically... 100% have not changed my stance on building social housing in central Middlesbrough. It is exactly what I've been talking about since almost the first day I walked through the doors. Secondly, it is difficult talking about people's jobs and livelihoods, and it always is. But at the end of the day, we are also a council who are answerable to the public, and some, it might well be that thousands of people end up watching this, and it's really important for the sake of transparency and openness is that we have a really honest discussion. And I'm not actually saying anyone should lose their job, but the public deserve to know how much money is spent on people whose job it is to research little bits of politics. And the last thing I would say is that I can see why people would claim that the last Labour administration uh, got a fantastic thing going with Tolsby Shops, because of course, it was just before the election. After 12 years of the shops being closed, after many years of the shops being closed, after lots of years of the shops being closed, suddenly people seemed to pop up and it was all over the media and photographs and whatever else. I've seen that and I know people who've lived there for years and years and years. And I'm really proud to play a small role in trying to fix that really quickly now. Thank you. Has anybody else any questions for the mayor? I've had a petition, I've knocked doors, I've done everything. And you were supposed to be an editor for Joe Mask, so sorry, the paper. You're working with him in the town. Will you, do, do you know? <laughs> I think she said she did it before you. Yes. Right. Councillor Rathbun, have you got a question? Is it a question? Emphasise those, the point. Is it a I question? I know those technicalities, unlike the uh, Labour group. Hang on, John, hang on. Uh, firstly, I'd like to apologise because we've heard from the ridiculous and the rude. Uh, I'd like to inject a bit of positivity back into proceedings. I am aware that both the Mayor and the Chief Executive um, have been made aware of a proposal by myself and Councillor Hubbard to recognise great sporting achievement in the uh, freedom of the borough we've proposed for Liam Plunkett because of the great achievement. So just to bring some positivity back into proceedings, I wonder if the Mayor could respond on his view with regards to that. Yeah, as I said, I think that uh, honouring sporting prowess and success is a brilliant thing. And I think we should all debate as a group and as a town exactly who deserves an honour and who doesn't. Thank you. Councillor McTeague, you wanted to ask a question. I do want to ask a question. Go ahead. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I want to ask the Mayor, am I right in thinking that, um, with regard to the Martin Crawl, did I read something in the, in the local newspaper that you were going to think along the lines of widening the road? 
And the reason I asked this question is years ago, I stood in this chamber when Ray Mallon was there, and I suggested that we widen the road, we can widen the road, at, you know, wherever possible, which will increase the flow of traffic and stop a bottleneck. And that was laughed at by certain people on that side of the road. And Ray Mallon said, hang on a minute, she may be right, we may need to come to that at some point in time. So are we going to do that? Are you actually looking to do that? Uh, so, so I've never commented on that, and to be honest, I, I genuinely don't know the answer. The chief exec's with me. Are you aware of anything there, uh, Tony, about widening the road? Uh, we're not aware of that. Right, we'll now move on. Agenda item number seven, the Deputy Mayor and Executive Member Reports. Now, we've had a little bit of a, a discussion this afternoon between uh, the monitoring officer and, and Bernie and myself. We have actually received 28 questions. Some members have submitted up to three questions. Um, we don't have the time to deal with them all because when you ask the question, you get a time of two minutes. And when you answer the question, you get a time of three minutes. That totals five minutes. You multiply that by 28, we're here till midnight. So what we've done, the three of us together, we've decided that we'll allow people to have one question the, 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 time that you, the time that you actually get for, for this part of the program is 30 minutes. So we'll ask people to ask one question. There'll be no, um, it, it, no, no comebacks, nothing at all. It'll be, it'll be straightforward, a question and an answer. And obviously, if you're going to ask a question and somebody else has asked virtually the same thing before you, we would appreciate it if you would pull your question out to give us the time. So we've got 30 minutes and we need to get through 15 questions. It isn't really, it isn't really feasible, but we, we'll try. But at the end of the day, if people, if members have got questions to ask and they don't manage to get them asked, I suggest all they can do is send an email to the relevant executive member and they will reply to you. Does everybody understand that? Yes. Good. So we'll make a start then. 30 minutes. Right, the first question is for Councillor High, and it's from Councillor Saunders. You've got, you've got two minutes to ask the question, three minutes to answer it. Yeah, yeah. yeah thanks, Chair. Yeah, it's just for the, the Deputy it's Mayor. <laughs> it's, it's on your report, number one, uh, Councillor High. Middles Alco Alcoholic Centre of, Ele of Ele Ec Excellence. Where will the centre be based? Thank you. Thank you for the question, Councillor Saunders. The, the proposal is that the centre will be based at the Tisha House. Uh, that is based just off the A66. Um, the reason for this being proposed is it was, it's always been used for a similar sort of process in terms of people suffering with addictions. Um, the, the building is currently vacant and it is a, a building of Middlesbrough Council. So there's discussions currently going on now with the, the person who has the long-term lease to make sure that we use that as a, the facility to provide these services. Thank you. Next question is again for Councillor High, and this time it's from Councillor Furness. Hello. Yeah. Um, I would just like to say I, like, I read the report, Councillor High, and I like the approach of joining up the services. It's definitely what we need to do to tackle the blight of addiction and uh, mental health issues as well. Um, but I just sort of see a bit of a contradiction between the possibility of the PSBO order being in place and... The possibility of the PSPO order, you know, the Public Safety Protection Order, um, and uh, and the redeployed officers, does that not contradict what you're trying to achieve, the joining up of the services and those officers being redeployed somewhere else, the homeless officers that were redeployed? Um, there's sort of a multitude of different point, uh, parts of that question, and, and, and the, the, the straightforward answer is they would need to be looked at in an individual basis. The, the main aim of what we are doing currently is to look at combining what we can see as the most critical areas that affect our vulnerable people within Middlesbrough, um, or should I say troubled people. Do you know, when, when we're reviewing and when we're looking at the current services that we have in place to, to look at multiple issues, one of the things we've identified and one of the things I'm working with the senior officers with is to look at a model that can look at a multitude of different issues for a particular person. 
when when people enter into services or access different sort of substance misuse support elements substances is never only the singular issue that they're facing uh, i think for a long time we've been looking at sort of different issues that these guys are suffering with as an individual sort of issue. So the main aim of the steps going forward is to ensure that people coming into any services that are commissioned by Middlesbrough Council are getting a full wraparound of potentially damaging areas that are stopping them progress within their own growth and recovery journey. In terms of the, the issues in, in association to the homeless officers, that is another, an, another area that I think we need to sort of discuss. And I, I can get some information out in terms of why those decisions were made. Thank you. Next one again for Councillor High, Councillor David Branson. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm just referring to uh, section two of uh, your report, um, uh, Councillor High, um, and, and I welcome what you put down about uh, the need to tackle homelessness and the various other issues. Uh, I've got a simple question. Um, does the, uh, do the executive um, have information on the number of persons presently in temporary accommodation in the Middlesbrough Council area as a result of homelessness? I think them figures will be accessible. Do I have them right now? I don't. So what I will do is I will ensure that I get an emailed response to you in terms of the actual numbers that we, we have on, on record relating to the particular individuals that you're, you're asking the question for. There you go. Next question, again for Councillor High, and this is from Councillor Hill. Now, you've got down here two questions, you're only getting one. <laughs> uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I just want to start by saying I'm completely behind the MACE initiative, um, but you quote a figure of £245,000 from yeah. Public Health England. Is that a grant or a loan? 20 past. Is it, well, is it a grant? Yeah. Uh, and um, that's a, thank you, Councillor Hill. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it, is, it is a grant. Is that a, it is a grant, yes. All oh, right, that's fine. Right. Um, are we able to reapply for it and get it again to keep the service going, or is, is that it? That's fine. Yeah, yeah. No, um, sorry, sorry. No, that, I'm, I'm we can only do one. I'm okay. sorry, we don't have the time for two. Okay. Um, so just, just, just to go back over your point, Councillor Hill, um, the, the funding that was identified was from um, a capital fund within public health. One of the things that our public health team do really, really well in Middlesbrough, and if you can, you can look into this, it's not usually replicated in other areas, and I'm not being dis discreditary to those guys is they're very proactive in finding additional resources and funding to provide critical services that we as a local authority would really struggle to find those finances for. So this is the, the, the public health team being really create, creative and proactive in identifying key areas that we need to plug within the system. Alcohol delivery is one of those areas. Uh, we do have obviously substance misuse services and commissioning around that but this is a different type of of service user do you know for us to engage with people who are affected by alcohol effectively we need to make sure the services are best set to meet their need so the, the guys have worked really hard to pull in this additional funding so this isn't anything to do with the local budget this is the guys working hard to pull that in the second part of your question i'll quickly answer this chair was in really it will, this is this this is a one-off capital funding grant. So the the aim of this is for us now to be creative in terms of how we can look at the longevity of providing this service because what we don't want and it's a valid point is for us to pop up a service for a period of time provide something into the community and then take that away at a later stage so I'm working with the commissioners in terms of this joint model of how we can look to continue to provide critical services that we're pulling in obviously the, the once the finances go it does create issue for us but I'll be working with the team to look at how we can maintain that in the long term thank you Thank you. Right, last question for Councillor High, and this time it's from Councillor Rathmel. You have two minutes to ask your question. Thank you, Chair. Um, this again is about part two of your report, the commissioning of services. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge and commend you on acknowledging the fact that homelessness isn't in isolation, uh, along with the domestic abuse, sexual abuse and drug misuse. One question I have got is, you've referred to a strategic needs assessment that was carried out in 1718. Now, looking at the substance abuse and the homelessness, one thing that's quite clear is that the council's own officers who dealt with that particular area um, 
didn't have anybody supporting them, recording valuable data. So what measures have you put in place or are you going to put in place so that we as an authority start recording this data correctly? Thank you for the question. Uh, what, what the, we're in the early stages of, of rewriting the, the full model in terms of our troubled adults. Um, as a part of that, one of the things we're really keen to look at setting is an integrated system. <clears throat> so when and a shared system across services. So when individuals are accessing the service, we are we the data that we are getting is going to be central to the information reporting that we are going to be pulling out. Um, in terms of the the stuff around homelessness, one we're working with the Communities and Cultures Directorate and the Director of Public Health to look at combined ways of monitoring it and capturing that data. Another thing that I think is important to share with people is I'm also working with the public health team at looking at a 20 week mapping exercise right across the town. Because one of the things that we often do is we work off national data um, and I've worked with this data for a long time and it can be very misleading in terms of the reality and, the, and what people and communities are actually experiencing around substances. So we, I'm also looking to do a full mapping exercise right across the Middlesbrough area, engaging with our substance misuse and our community support officers to get a true understanding of the, the nature of what Middlesbrough is facing currently. Thank you. Right, that, that concludes the, the, <coughs> the questions for Councillor High. we we'll move on to a, a, another executive member, Councillor Davidson. The first question to her is from Councillor Goodchild. Um, really pleased to hear about the stay and put agency. Um, than the fact that they're up for another award for 2018. I just wondered if the fee for the residents stays the same as it, as it was when, before they got the award. You know, if they cut the grass, it's 15 quid and... The microphone, I'm not hearing you very well. Pardon? Is the... I, think, oh, sorry, I think she wants you to speak up. I'm pleased to hear That's that the, sta the stain, I've done that bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that the agency are up for another award, 2018. What I'm wondering about is, do the fees stay the same for the residents? Like, for instance, cutting the grass 15 quid, does that stay the same or are we, are we talking about putting any prices up for residents? I have been asked this by... Um. Councillor, as far as I'm concerned, everything does stay the same. But if there is going to be any change, I will recontact you. As far as I'm concerned, there's no change. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next question for Councillor Davidson is from Councillor Udin. Thank you, Chair. I'll give it a miss. I'll uh, email Councillor Davidson uh, with the question. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Next question for Councillor Davidson is from Councillor Cook. Um, I can see in your living standards in private rented sectors that there's concerns about the standards of housing, um, fire doors, alarms, emergency lighting, um, properties illegally turned into HMOs. Um, with the sort of reflection on that report, will you be supporting that no licensing scheme and a further rollout with Newport? Yes. Um this scheme um, has worked for some time. Um, we have several people under this scheme, the multi-occupancy houses, and we do work with, along with the licensing scheme, yes. Right, next question is of a, of a Councillor Cooper, and her question, their, his question comes from Councillor Halawi. Right, thank you very much. Um, Next one for Councillor Cooper, is for Councillor Storey. Two minutes for the question, yeah, I just, um, three minutes I'm, for the answer. Thanks Chair. I'm looking at the item that says progress against approved savings plans um, and I note that it's, it's one sentence. Um, that says that progress has been monitored um, and approved saving plans and mitigations being put in place. I wondered what delays um, have there been to the savings plans? What, are, what delays are expected? And uh, how are the savings plans progressing in light of the pressures on um, the Children's Services Department? 
Thank you, Councillor Starry, for that question. Uh, I will give you what I've got, which is the services providing saving plans and progressing currently will be reported to the executive on September the 3rd, and any further information will be given in writing. If you need anything else from me, if you send me an email, I'll reply to you in that review. Right, next, next question is uh, for Executive Member Councillor Mika Smiles. And her first question is from Councillor Thompson. Thank you, Chair. Can I ask the Executive Member, where has the funding come from to employ 40 street wardens? I know it's 40 because this was reported at the Joint Action Group and also the two env enforcement vehicles. Would the funding be better spent on employing PCSOs who have more power? Thank you. Hello there. Um, yeah, I'm not actually sure on the, where the budget's coming from. I do believe it's covered by the budget already. Um, but, yeah, if I'd be able to get back to you in writing, that'd be great. Can, 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 the, can, the, can the mayor answer this? Yeah, hi. Um, just to clarify. So, um, the money for street wardens is coming from Tees Valley Combined Authority. There is a pot of money which we can use to regenerate the centre of town. Mm. Now, the biggest barrier we have to regeneration is crime and antisocial behaviour. If you get out there and talk to people that would consider living in town or would consider shopping in town or basing a business in town, crime and antisocial behaviour is the biggest barrier. So it's completely sensible that we want to use some of the money to fund street wardens to make it safer, cleaner, and a better environment. Regards the actual vehicles, the fantastic news is two vehicles that are now patrolling the streets with cameras and gathering data and images which we supply at the police uh, cost a few hundred quid. We already had the vehicles. All we had to do was use them a little bit more for something else and put some new signage on them. So that's the great news for the taxpayer. And by the way, you know what? I got, uh, I, I won't point to him, um, but there's somebody here tonight who contacted me a problem that he was aware of, a, a serious crime problem, persistent in his area. And we sent out vehicles and very quickly there was an alteration in the behavior of these people now i'm not claiming that's going to be long standing but there was an immediate impact of reassuring the community so i think these vehicles are going to prove to be really popular really effective and really good value for money thanks thank you right then the next one for for councillor smiles was from councillor halawi but you declined your other one do you want do you want to do the same with this one It's not specifically for Councillor Smiles, Chair. So my well, question well, well, is rhetorical, actually. Well, so I'll leave it till the end as well. It's not a member. question to a specific executive It's not a question. It's a rhetorical question at the end of several statements. So I will just say what I was going to say. A rhetorical question. Does that come under the description of question? No, I don't think it does. So um, I want to say that... No, Councillor Howie, I, I don't think it does. Could you not... Could you not do it on an email and send it to the No, because it's there. about various reports across the council and I wanted to make a statement about that. Well, well go on, make a start and we'll see how it, we'll see how it, how it transpires. Right. I wanted to say that as I'm, I read through to, a number of the reports... Pardon? I'm going to Pardon? Well, you can stop me after everybody. two minutes. I've yeah, got that. Go on, and, that's my allocated time, yeah. isn't it? So I'm entitled yeah. to have that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So when I read through the executive reports, I was very struck by the number of achievements and awards, which are actually a legacy from the previous administration. These have all been well-earned and well-deserved, and I really want to thank on behalf of every single one of us, everyone involved, members of the council, individuals and groups for these achievements. For example, the UK Recovery Walk on Saturday the 7th of September, Middlesbrough will host the National UK Recovery Walk. and We were selected from a competitive bidding process beating competition among the, around the country. This is a major achievement. I'll ask it when I'm ready, thank you. Sorry, will, will the people in the, in the, in the public and I've got will, two will, minutes. Will, will, which, will you be, will you be quiet to. again? Well, not only do we ask questions, but she is also allowed to make a statement, which is what she is doing. Thank you for the clarification, Chair. 
Um, Live, the Live Well Centre wins the prestigious Municipal Journal Awards and it was given a Municipal Journal Public Health Improvement Award and this was a great achievement for a wonderful centre and a marvellous initiative. Um, there were other awards such as the Stop Smoking Awards and I won't go into all of them but I analysed every single report and picked out the awards which were really prestigious and very meaningful. For example, um, in Middlesbrough Town Hall, we successfully hosted the Journal Gazette Annual Culture Award. And this town hall was awarded this by the Arts Council. This C is a real C significant Councilor thing. Councillor can I just interrupt you? You've run out of time. You get two minutes. So, two, minutes. two minutes, that's all you get. I've got 20 seconds, so I'd like to say the final award... You, I don't think my time should have to include interruptions, Chair. I should get two clear minutes to say what I have to say as an entitlement. No. No, I can't accept the interruptions in my time can All count right. as my time, thank seconds. you. So I would like to thank everyone in the local authority, especially for the Town Hall Awards, which we've won two particularly prestigious awards. So what I want to say is a huge thank you on behalf of everyone, and my rhetorical question is would you please join me in thanking everyone in this town who has, in the previous administration and now, made a significant contribution to the well-being and lives of all of our residents. Thank you. Thanks for the question. And you know what? I will certainly, and I know everybody in this room, will absolutely champion, applaud, and praise everyone who played a really important role in making some great things happen. What's really important to remember, of course, is that the politicians always reckon they did it. When it goes well, they always say, look what we did. And when stuff goes badly, they nick off and disappear. Remember that when were the school's places problem? None of the councillors could be seen. They were doing a runner. They let the officers take the flak. So, so what we have to remember is, yes, we champion hard work, we praise success, and we must give the right people a pat on the back. But we've got to stop, in all cases, politicians trying to take the credit for the hard work of others. Right. Okay. I, I can't answer that. I'm, I'm not. I'm not that sure. You don't like I don't know. Right. If, if it's a matter to me, the, the, the ruling is you can ask questions or you can or you can make a statement. Well, I've never seen it happen before, so I, I don't know. Right. Okay. Right. 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 We'll, we'll carry on. Councillor, Councillor Smiles, we're still in, in her little block. The next person to ask a question is Councillor Rostron. Thank you, Chair. Can we be clear? Can I make a statement to Councillor Smiles? Yes. It, it's, a, it's actually it's a comment and a statement on, from your report. Yeah. In your report, you've, you've got quite a big section on, on the big weekend, which was a very important event for the town. It was a huge event. Um, and it was a very successful event. And in your report, you actually say that it's taken some time to build up trust with the BBC to get that event here. And I would just like to say that, I mean, obviously it was before you, you were in post, and I think um, the former mayor, Dave Budd, and also the former executive member, Mick Thompson, had a lot to do with building up that trust and getting the event. But what I would like to say, first of all, I would like to put on, on record my congratulations and thanks to the staff of this council, because... <laughs> Because an event like this, it, it isn't straightforward, it's resource intensive, there's preparation, organisation, the event itself and the cleaning up. So I hope you'll all join with me in, in thanking the staff for what they did. Can I just say I absolutely agree with you um, and like Andy said it's not always down to politicians it's down to the officers and I think the part they played in I mean it was because of them and it ch it's changed the way that we're viewed nationally um, and you can't ask for more than that really so thank you very much uh, and you're right it was an amazing success the the staff were brilliant um, and, and I'm I'm going to do it again I'm going to bash politicians trying to take the credit because literally just after 
just after I was elected, we had this fantastic event. The eyes of the world were on Middlesbrough. People were amazed the, the, how beautiful the area was. The publicity was worth tens of millions of pounds. So I called the BBC. I actually called them. I tracked down the main man. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. And I said, thank you. Thank you for what you helped make happen. What can we do next? How can we do it again? And do you know what? He reeled off a list of amazing staff. And do you know what he didn't mention? He didn't mention a single politician. He didn't say that councillor so-and-so or mayor so-and-so played a brilliant role. He named staff. So I would champion the staff all the way. And please, let's not let politicians take all the credit. Thank you. Right, we're, 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 the, the next three questions should be for Councillor McCabe, but M- Councillor McCabe has submitted his apologies. Will you send an email, or do you want to do it? Yes, Councillor Walker. Yes, um, in the interest of openness and transparency, I would like to read this question. Right. Two minutes without interruption, hopefully. Two minutes without interruption. The trial of the free bulky waste collections for residents started June, July and August. That was the plan for three months. How was this planned? There's a question. Was there a thorough strategic plan put in place to account for the increase in calls for bulky waste removal? How was it, when was it launched? In June? Was it publicised and how was it promoted? At, that's another question. At present, I have received complaints from residents that it's taken far too long to have bulky waste removed and sometimes dates of September and October are being given as an expected date of removal. Some residents are complaining that even when given a date, council don't turn up. Then their waste is being taken by youths and either dumped elsewhere or burnt. Will there be a scrutiny afterwards as to tell us how well it's worked, if at all? Has this reduced fly tipping? as was envisaged? And if it has, by how much and how can the data be published too? Just how much has it saved the council and is it expected to continue? Thank you very much for the non-interruptions. Thank you, Councillor Walker. Councillor McCabe had two more questions, two further questions. One was from Councillor Cook and one was from Councillor Hubbard. Councillor Cook, you go first. Unless, of course, you just want to send him an email. No. Thank you, Chair. Um, so we can see in number seven tied in Middlesbrough that there's oh, going to be... Oh, I'm sorry. I've got to interrupt you. I've just been told by the Mayor that you've already asked a question. And you have. I'm sorry. We're, we're limited, limiting it to one, one per person. Okay. Sorry. Councillor Hubbard. Thank you, Chair. I will uh, submit mine by email, but I would like to take this opportunity to uh, welcome Councillor Stephen Hill to the Council Chamber which I believe should have come under item yeah, four, yeah. and congratulate, congratulate him on his yeah. election success. Thank you, Chair. Right, next, next set of questions of uh, Councillor Mrs. Hobson. Yeah, okay. The Mayor wants to, to give a reply on behalf of Dennis. Yeah, just on behalf of uh, Councillor Dennis McCabe. Um, so, y- y- I mean, you asked about nine or ten or eleven questions but I'll, I'll try and give you a general answer which might might deal with the the gist of it is that what was clear is that fly tipping and dumping and refuse in the streets was becoming uh, not just a problem but a colossal problem that's damaging uh, the environment it's damaging jobs it's damaging how people feel and their mental health so we have to do something we have to do something drastic and something new and something that's not too expensive so we're going to try ideas. Uh, and are they all going to work? Probably not. Are some of them going to work? To be honest, I don't know. But what we want to do is try something. So talking to senior officers, a variety of senior officers, and getting a sense for how much extra work it might involve and how, many, how much lost revenue we might face, but the benefit to the environment and the work it might save, we just thought, you know what? That's worth a three-month trial. And what's really clear... What, I know you're shaking your head, but, but I am telling the truth. But I am telling the truth. We, we did think that. And what we decided was, we're going to give it a go. We are going to see how it goes. And what we've learned is that fly tipping does appear to be diminished, but the queues for refuse collection do seem to be increasing. As yet, truthfully, hand on heart, we don't know. 
if it costs any more money than the previous system, and if so, how much. At the end of the three months, we're going to look at it and we're going to do the best thing for the town. And uh, no apologies for that. If it's rubbish, we're going to stop it. If it's brilliant, we'll do more of it. And we'll keep trialling new and novel ideas to find ways of doing great things with very little money. Thanks. Right, this, is going to be, this will be the last question because we've reached, we've reached our time now. And this is for... Uh, Councillor Hobson, and it's uh, a question from Councillor Arundel. Two minutes for the question, three minutes for the answer. Thank you, Chair. Uh, it's not a question, it's a statement. It's on page two of uh, Councillor Hobson's report under the heading of Revenues and Benefits. Here we have an excellent report in supporting the people at Revenues and Benefits and the wonderful work that they've carried out. I'll read one line which sums it all up. Revenues and Benefits are delivering to a standard that others should aspire to. I think we should both congratulate and thank the people in those services for the wonderful job they're doing. Thank you very much, Chair. You wish to answer, Councillor? Thank you, Councillor Arundel, for that. Um, once again, this is about the people who work in Revs and Bens. They actually, they are so, so into working and finding new ideas. Uh, I've had my eyes opened, but I have had my eyes open because for the last 21 years, they have had an accreditation. Now, I didn't know anything about this, and I've been a councillor for 12 years. For, for 21 years, they have had an accreditation. So we really need to say thank you to them for all the hard work that they do, but also for coming up with new ideas every year. And as you said, this year, they've got this extra accreditation for um, doing extra, extra work. And they were saying that people should uh, look at Middlesbrough council and the way they are operating on this and take note from them. So thank you very much for your um, compliment and I will take it back to the people. Thank you. Right. <laughs> Councillor Odin, you were trying to attract my attention. Did you want to say something? But there's no, there's no supplementary questions, you understand? No, I have in the Two questions I had. Yes, one, you do. one I said yes, I will email. Yes, you do. You do. Well, email well, we only have time to do one. No, no, I said I will email that one, but I will ask another question. I, well, obviously, there are two questions there. That's well, why. Who, who, who was it for? For Barry Cooper, Councillor Cooper. Will he take it? He didn't, he didn't ask a question, Chair. No, he, I didn't have the chance, turned, sir. He, he turned it down. He had two questions and he, he refused to do one. Now he wants to know if he can ask his question to you. Right, go ahead. Is that okay? Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah, this okay. is the last one. Okay, no that's more. very kind of you. Thank you very much. I waited for a long time actually for this, yeah. Well, obviously I understand that one of our neighboring authorities is really seriously concerned about the children coming into care, our young children and the young people coming into care. And obviously they are saying that it's the central government, which is I 100% agree with. Their austerity and fund, uh, short funding, you know, they cut fundings and so on. But I just want to find out, you know, obviously, how are we doing, our, our authority? Can you just give us a clear picture how many children we have in care currently? Thank you very much. Well, thank you for that, Councillor Udin. Um, I'm not going to guess, so I'll have to get back to you on that. I was expecting something on actual something else, but I, I can send you a copy of the report. It is all on record and let you know. Right, that's, that's the end of, of executive members' questions. And I know some of you put two and three questions in, but really, we can't go on forever and ever answering them. So if you need, if you need answers to your questions, I suggest you just email to the, relevant, to the relevant executive member. So we carry on now in the agenda. We're up to item eight, which is the report of the overview and scrutiny board. Now, we've all got a copy of this, and we've all read it. Can we just note this? Is there anything that, that stands out that's, that's not quite right, or can we just note it as a report? Yes? Right, thank you. 
Item nine, urgent items. Don't have any. Item 10, members' question time. These are some questions submitted to the Mayor from Councillor Cook. All three of them. Can either do them, would you want them separately or do you want them all together? Separate, it's good. Three separate ones, Mr Cook, please. Councillors expect the meeting about the TS1 PSPO. Thank you for that question. Um, whenever you guys want it, to my knowledge, and I have checked on this, nobody's come forward requesting formally a meeting. So please get in touch. Uh, I'll come and see you and we'll talk about it thoroughly. When can we expect the unveiling of the big plan for the Brownfield site in Newport? So uh, we've got an, an NDA, non-disclosure agreement, with a, with a partner. Uh, we are hoping to work very closely with, very successfully with, and because of that, nothing can be announced right now. We believe, we expect and we hope that we can make an announcement in the middle of August, within 28 days of today. What safeguards are in place for community groups wanting to litter pick? So there have been litter picks all over the, uh, the town. They're pretty much not organised by the council. The council backs them and will publicise them. And when we do that, we will, uh, wherever possible, send along a member of staff who can look at uh, risk assessments and things like that. But it's not actually our responsibility. When we publicise community litter picks that other people are organising, we will state that it's not a good idea to send uh, unsupervised kids along. And in fact, people should be over 18 if they want to come along. So we're doing all we can. It's not our responsibility to provide safeguarding. They're community events that are organised by others. Thank you very much. Right, agenda might um, do Supplementary? Sorry? Can I have a supplementary question to that one? A supplementary question? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, okay. I'll make it quick. Yeah. Um, recently I went on a litter pick with some other members who are actually here today, I think, um, and we found, among other things, knives, needles, you name it, it was there, and it was actually on the Brownfield site in Newport, so that's, you could argue, councilish land, um, and it's a council-promoted event. Now, my concern is, is that while we can deal with the sharps by telling them to phone the hotline, we should be really providing them with a bit of training and possibly even the boxes because while someone will come and collect the syringes, the knives are a different matter. They've been told to take them home by the street ones and dispose of them themselves, which is completely unacceptable. Can we see some sort of provision for um, at least the sharp boxes or at least the training? Um, I, I find it, I, I don't doubt what you're saying. I find it hard to believe that a street warden would actually say that. It may well have been the police or a PCSO is what I've heard. It is the case that there are these items, or sadly, very sadly, all over town now. Uh, all kinds of <clears throat> drug paraphernalia and other undesirable things that blight the community and pose uh, a really significant health risk. We've got a great team that works on that. We've got policies and procedures in place. Whether we should, whenever there's a community event where there might be examples of this around, whether we should allocate more staff and therefore more costs to deal directly with that is something for us to, to think about. But, but we, should, we should think about it. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. <coughs> agenda item 11, notice of motion, there is none. Notice of item, agenda item 12, notice of urgent, urgent motions, there is none. Agenda item 13, Localism Act 2011, a request for general dispensations. And this is from the monitoring officer. Thank you, sir. Um, members, you've got before you a, a report concerning dispensations. You'll, you'll all be aware of the need to disclose pecuniary interests generally um, and when a conflict arises when you're present at a meeting. Section 33 of the Localism Act 2011 provides for the grant of a dispensation in limited circumstances. And this report is seeking agreement to that. If you look at paragraph five, that, will, that details the circumstances. Um, in, it is recommended that, uh, that you 
a general dispensation is granted because it actually protects members so that members aren't in, at risk of the commission of a criminal offence, but it also provides that the local authority can meet and have quorum meetings and carry on carrying out business. Um, it, sh it should be noted that this dispensation, it doesn't apply to that situation where there may be council tax arrears, so it doesn't affect that rule. So are members able to agree to the granting of this? You'll see on the back that it, it applies to all members who've applied. Everybody agreed? Thank you very much. Agen agenda item now is number 14, which is the reviewing the Middlesbrough local plan. And it's Councillor Walters. Where is he? Councillor Walters to present. Thank you, Chair. Um, You've all seen the, the report for the revised local plan. Um, it has been looked at and reviewed for the 2018 local plan. doesn't have good public approval and needs better consultation. Um, I think we can all agree that the, the consultation wasn't great with regards to the previous local plan, so we need to look at that and make sure that going forward we consult better with the members of the public, look at the areas that need looking at and review them. We don't want to scrap this plan. What we want to do is look at the areas that are good and take them forward and then adjust the areas that we haven't looked far enough into and make sure that we, we, we look at this properly and consult properly. Um, the, I know there's concerns with regards to the, the 2014 local plan. That's got enough time now to take us up to 2024. You've seen the pro proposed timescale for the um, new local plan. And I, what I'd ask for the council to do is to um, approve the revised scope for the programme of the hot takeaways provision in and around local schools. I think that's really important that we do that. Um, we are also going to set up a working task group and we'd ask for Labour to join us in that, in working with us to make sure that this is cross-party, it's open, and that we do this in the right way going forward. So I'd ask for the Council's approval on that. Thank you, Councillor Waters. Anybody got any questions I'd like to ask him before? No? Well, can we take it to a vote? Can we say that all the people that approved the revised scope and programme for the preparation of the Middlesbrough local plan and adopts the hot food takeaway policy, could they please all show? Thirty-nine for anybody against? Nobody. So that's that's carried. And that, ladies and gentlemen, brings us to the end of the meeting. I'd like to thank you for your attendance, and we'll see you all at the next meeting. <laughs> <laughs>